Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over part one of the Project FPS tutorial series. Now this tutorial series, if you don't already know, is all about creating a first person shooter game in the Blender game engine from start to finish. This is going to include level of detail, texturing, level design, a weapon manager so you can have as many weapons as you like. There's going to be enemy AI, small cutscenes like opening doors, and a whole bunch of other stuff, which I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do in the Blender Game Engine. Now the reason I'm doing this is there are a lot of other tutorials on YouTube showing you how to make a cool FPS game in the Blender Game Engine. Now half of these tutorials don't even finish the series, so you're left with like a half-finished product. And the other half, if you do finish, doesn't really do a proper job. Like, most of the time there's no texturing, you're just setting everything with materials, say you have a green gun and the floor's pink or something, there's no proper textures or methods used in it that you would use in a proper FPS game. So I just wanted to make a tutorial series covering this from start to finish, with everything in it that you need to know to start out making your game. Now this whole tutorial series is going to be free, so if you want to subscribe, like, share, or comment the videos, it would be greatly appreciated, but again, it's not required. So, let's go ahead and get started. Now, one thing we'll need to do, which is very important in any game, before you decide to make a game, is plan it all out. Many people, myself included, will start a game adding bits and pieces here, saying, oh, that would be a cool idea, try add that in. It sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it fails miserably, and you have really have no idea what you're doing. After a while, the game becomes hard to work with, and, yeah, you don't really have any direction or what to do next. So what we're going to be doing to make sure this doesn't fall into the same category is planning it all out from start to finish. Now there are multiple things we're going to have to plan out first. One of them is the map. So this is going to be the map that the player goes on. This is also going to be the map that the player fights the enemy AI. Now in a normal FPS game, you'd obviously have lots and lots of these levels, but I'm going to only be showing you how to do one. Now the map isn't the only thing you have to plan out. You also have to plan out a whole bunch of other stuff. Example of this is the weapons, which ones you want in game, how many you want, and the abilities of each weapon. Then on top of that, you might have props that you want in the scene. So, for example, that might be in this level here. But some assets that I had is, for example, the trains here, and I had some vending machines, which I made before the demo level itself, along with, I think, the victims here or the dead bodies, and the ATMs and stuff. So those sort of things that you know for sure are going to be in your level, you want to plan out so you know you have them all made before you put your level together. So make sure you have all of that sorted out. Now on top of that, you'll need animations, so you need to sort out which reload animations you want, perhaps reloading for each weapon that you have. Then on top of that, you want to sort out when you have almost mini cutscenes, for example, opening doors. So you want to sort out where you want those in the level. For me, it's fairly simple, just wherever a door is, that's where I'd have a cutscene of the player opening the door. Then on top of that, but this is almost optional, is having the particles and special effects. Now you can add these if you already strongly know what you want. For me, when I was making this level, I only really had in my mind maybe some fire and smoke in the background here, which I just ended up putting in properly. The dust as you're almost walking down the level, that sort of came to mind a little bit later. So that isn't as important as the rest of it. So let's start off with part one, the map. Now what you want to do is open up some sort of program which you can quickly sketch something in. For me it's just paint, uh, it seems to be the easiest. And what you want to do is have a rough layout of your map. Doesn't matter what it looks like, it can look horrendous just as long as you have something to go from. And so when you're creating the map from start to finish, you know what you're wanting to create and you don't run into any unexpected or oh, I'm not sure what to put here. So for me, this was the example or what I had in my mind at the time of creating the subway level or the project FPS demo from scratch. Again, this is up to you, but you definitely want to do a sort of sketch out of what you want your map to look like. If you're doing this for your first time, definitely don't make it too big. 
because you're gonna have to model everything in it and you're gonna have to get it all working at once. So don't do anything huge, maybe try to keep it small, maybe this size, maybe a little bit smaller. So you just wanna get all the ideas you have in your head, you just wanna slap them on here just so you have a rough outline to go by. So once you have your map sorted out, you want to go along to your weapons. Now for me, I had a primary weapon, I also had a secondary, um, this was a pistol, and this ended up being a submachine gun. Gun, there we go. I also had a grenade, and I also had a smoke grenade. Obviously the smoke grenade only emits smoke, and the grenade just explodes. And then on top of that, I had a knife. Be aware that the more weapons you add, the more animations you're going to need and more work it will be to get it all going as you have to program each of these into the weapon manager. So make sure you have all your weapons sorted out and also make sure you have all your models sorted out as well as you'll need assets for these to go by. Now I got my submachine gun from Blendswap by Dennis H2010. Now if you want to, you can model your own guns and your own assets, but for me it was just easier to use a more professional looking model. If you do decide to use any other assets from here, make sure you read the license and make sure you follow the terms of it. Now for the grenade, the knife, the smoke grenade, and the secondary pistol, I got them all from this free guns giveaway by Hanzo on Blender Artist. In this package, I think he's, yeah, he's listed all the different ones he has here. So for this project, because this just popped up in time, I ended up using it. You don't have to use this, but it's a great resource and a whole bunch of awesome guns. Either way, both of those links will be down in the description below if you wanna go ahead and get them. The next thing, after you've got your weapons sorted out, you want to go along to the props. Now, I didn't really have much planned here. I think I had a vending machine and a dead body and some train carriages planned. But anyway, once you have all your main props that you already know you're gonna have in there sorted out, you need to sort out your animations, at least list the ones that you're going to be using. For me, it was reloading for the primary. There was also swapping. So putting the gun down, picking up a new one. So you need swapping primary. Then on top of that, you're also gonna need shooting for primary. And I think that is about it, just for each gun. Cutscenes for me is just wherever a door is. So I didn't really have multiple cutscenes. I think I had one at the end. So final cutscene, that was the only other one I needed. Uh, particle and special effects, I think for me was just the fire. I ended up putting in the dust as I got closer to finishing the level. Now one more thing which you'll have to keep in mind is what Blender version you're going to be using. Now the best way to go about this is you basically just want to find the most stable build with the least bugs but with the most updated features. For me it was version 2.70a Basically, that was the most recent build with level of detail, and also the versions after 2.70a started to have a bit of problems. I think 2.71 kept crashing with my Python scripts or something. I didn't have too much luck with the flipper animations either. So the reason I used 2.70a is because level of detail and the flipper animations work. Also, I think with version 2.69 of Blender, there was something broken with the exporting out games. So again, this is why I used version 2.7. So to get the version of Blender that you want to get, all you have to do is go along to the website here. I think the most recent version is Blender 2.73. If you have that working and there's no bugs or anything and it's working perfectly, feel free to use that. But otherwise, find a stable model or a stable build that you want to use and then use that. So to find the older builds, just go along here to older versions. And then what you do is go along here to the download blender.org release. We'll come up with lots and lots of text. Basically, this is all the different versions of Blender that have been released, going all the way back to Blender 1.0. So once you've found the build you want, for me, I think it was 2.7, you'll click on that, and then it has all the different versions. This includes the alpha and the beta. 
depending if the version has an alpha and a beta. For 2.7 it was only an alpha, so that's probably the most fixed or the most stable build, so go ahead and get that. I'm on Windows 64, so for me I'll just use the executable, it's easiest to work with, so I'll just click on that and then download it. Also on top of this, one more thing, is we'll be needing the FPS hands that your player will be seeing. So the animated rig of the player's arms and the player's hands uh, for the reload animations and opening doors and all of that sort of good stuff. So we'll have to put FPS hands in here. Now I also got them from BlendSwap. I think Kuronos on BlendSwap made them. Anyway, there'll be a link down in the description for those as well. Okay, so I think that is the majority of the planning sorted out. So that's all that sort of stuff you need to get out of the way before you even start making a game. This video was more of an overview of the stuff that you have to go over before you jump right in on game development. However, next week we're going to be going right on into it and we'll be getting into the FPS setup. So we'll be getting that sorted, then the weapon manager sorted, and getting all the animations and stuff going. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, or share. All of that stuff is greatly appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome tutorials. So that's it from me. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.